Thanks to Thermo Fisher and thanks to all the organizers and partners for making this possible. I am honored to be presenting to you today on the topic COVID and beyond NGS applications for public health surveillance, epidemiology, and emerging pathogen identification. My name is Eugene Yaboa, and I am a senior specialist and expertise in next generation sequencing with the Association of Public Health Laboratories, or in short, APHL. This presentation is in collaboration with the Oregon State Public Health Laboratory, where I provide technical expertise in sequencing, method development, and quality management. And this is a disclosure from Thermo Fisher. We will review the role of APHL in public health laboratories, NGS role in public health labs, both current and future, NGS role in public health pre and post pandemic, public health priorities, limitations, and needs. And lastly, for the table of contents, we will review the future of NGS in public health labs. Role of APHL in public health laboratory. APHL's mission is to shape national and global health outcomes by promoting the value and contributions of public health laboratories and continuously improving the public health lab system and practice. APHL works to safeguard the public's health by strengthening the labs in the United States and across the world. The association calls members include state and local public health labs, state environmental and agricultural labs and other government laboratories that conduct testing of public health significance. Public health labs is a first line of defense, uh, defense to protect the community against diseases and other health hazards. In collaboration with members and public health laboratories, APHL advances lab systems and practices and promotes policies that support healthy communities. Also, APHL connects public, US public health labs with federal agencies serving as a conduit for exchange of information. The core values of APHL international initiatives are to contribute to lab strengthening activities that make a difference to public health outcomes. Now we go over the role of Oregon State Public Health Labs, also known as OSPHL. OSPHL, or the Oregon State Public Health Lab, supports Oregon Health Authority's mission through the following statewide and multi-state activities. It provides highly specialized reference testing, which includes full genome sequencing. It also provides clinical tests for state and local health department or disease control programs. And this is mostly for the purpose of disease diagnosis, prevention, surveillance, and treatment. The lab responds to public health emergencies, uh, which includes pandemics and outbreaks of infectious diseases and bioterrorism. The lab assures through regulation, the quality of testing in more than 2,500 medical, environmental and drug screening labs throughout Oregon. Just to note, this is just the short version of what public health laboratories in the US contribute to in support of local health. Most labs do even more and collaborate with other states to support other public health initiatives. Oregon State Public Health Lab also tests for food, water, 
and environmental samples for evidence of microbial contamination. Oregon State Public Health Laboratory is one of five sections in the Center for Public Health Practice with over 100 full-time employees that comprise of three sections, communicable disease testing, newborn screening, and laboratory compliance. For the newborn screening, the lab provides testing of newborn babies for genetic disorders, which can cause disability or death if undetected. For laboratory compliance, 20.4 million tests on 360,000 human specimens per biannum are provided uh, through the laboratory. The lab performs 24 million tests on 360,000 human specimens. The lab receives specimens from 34 local health departments, 68 hospitals and clinical labs across Oregon, 3,000 individual medical practitioners in the region. The lab compliance section oversees CLIA certification of clinical laboratories and also accredits environmental laboratories which monitor the safety of drinking water. And I will note here again that although these numbers are and activities are specific to the Oregon State Public Health Lab, most public health labs conduct similar activities and, uh, and other regions have even more specialized testing, including environmental and radioactive surveillance. Now we look at the role of NGS in public health lab, both current and future. Currently, the role of NGS in public health lab is mostly but not limited to supporting infectious disease investigations and pandemics. Currently, NGS drives public policy through quarantine and safety measures. The ability to characterize genomic data into clinical significance using next generation sequencing has played a major role in public health decision making and policy to control emerging and current infectious disease, as well as outbreak investigations. Current NGS activities support state and local officials. NGS data allows for a rapid precision response to outbreaks and investigations by health officials and infectious disease officers. The data also provide guidance on managing public health, like contact tracing, healthcare management, and systems. NGS data provides accurate and precise results compared to other molecular methods. This accuracy and precision are critical to guiding healthcare practices more effectively, efficiently, and in a timely manner. Now we take a look at the future of NGS. This is especially important for manufacturing companies looking to gauge public health's vision for NGS applications. Expanding portfolio of pathogen sequence. Public health is going to benefit greatly from NGS applications since these methods will open new avenues to be able to sequence the full genome of more pathogens. This technology is also evolving and automations and optimizations are making the workflows faster and efficient, which will overall produce sequence data faster. Portability of sequencing platforms, especially in rural and remote areas. Creation of stable reagents and less stringent NGS workflow coupled with portable sequencing platforms is going to change public health, especially in rural areas, farms, and in regions where public health lab isn't readily accessible. In terms of uh, surveillance, being able and having the ability to identify infectious pathogens in their community and the evolution of these diseases are very important. Also, the ability to detect infectious agents and be able to characterize and track genetic variations within these infectious agents 
has been instrumental in the success of public health surveillance. For nationwide detection, communities of practices like clinical lab consortiums and collaborations with academic centers through focus groups have provided the much needed support that public health labs need. Also data sharing with CDC, GSAID, NCBI, or other data repository resources have been instrumental in making sure that regional and national health surveillances actually work. Now we go to the next slide, which is the role of public health labs for post, uh, post and pre-pandemic. For pre-pandemic, public health labs had limited role in the design and implementation of NGS platforms and SOPs. Most public health labs depended on federal agencies like the CDC to design and develop assays, which were then adopted and validated in the labs for use. This was also due to funding constraints. Public health labs were mostly focused on surveillance and outbreak investigations or pathogens of concerns. Most public health labs were focused primarily on supporting surveillance activities and reporting findings to public health officials for investigations. At the Oregon State Public Health Lab, most NGS work focused on foodborne pathogens. As we look to post-pandemic, labs have taken an active role in NGS method development and implementation. Since the pandemic, public health labs have taken an active role in implementing especially uh, of SARS-CoV-2 and other pathogens of interest. There, also, there are also more distributed efforts at the state level for NGS design and implementation. More, moreover, there's also active support and collaboration between CDC and other funding partners when it comes to public health uh, support. Due to the funding constraints, most NGS work in public health labs were pathogen specific, but with the need to prepare and be ready for the next emerging pathogen and the capabilities now we see with NGS and this technology, and as it rapidly evolves, it has been adopted for a more broader pathogen agnostic approach. This capability has also provided interest in other pathogens and detection methods, not limited to metagenomics, AFI, outbreaks of unknown origins, AMR, bacteria, viruses, influenza, wastewater, measles, and even mycology. Now we look at public health priorities limitations and needs. The priorities for public health. Sustainability, or in the use case situation, example, uh, HIV drug resistance and other pathogen detection. As public health labs acquire several sequencing platforms to support testing, surveillance and outbreak investigations, especially during this pandemic, there is a fundamental question that most labs are asking, and that is what is next? As the number of COVID specimens goes down and the approach shifts from a pandemic to an endemic state, labs are looking to other ways and means to use these same instruments, reagents, and consumables and repurpose them to other organisms without drastically changing the workflow. For example, can the ion implicit workflow for SARS-CoV-2 be modified so it can be used to sequence other pathogens like HIV, polio, measles, norovirus, and other public health pathogens of interest? Also, ongoing support from funding partners because sequencing done in public health lab is not diagnostic, there is no reimbursement for NGS. As a result, labs rely on funding partners for ongoing support. 
Continual support from funding partners is a priority since the lab cannot function without procuring the necessary supplies that it needs to carry on sequencing. In terms of limitations, most come from the funding stream. Once again, there's no reimbursement for NGS for public health. There is some reimbursement, uh, reimbursement for testing, but very minimal. Most of the funding are grants, state funded, mostly also from CDC. These stresses on the previous point about getting continuous support and funding. The time to process samples, set up costs, lack of support of bioinformatics is also a limitation. During an active outbreak investigation, it is critical that results be released in a timely manner to public health officials so they can evaluate the act effectively, especially if isolation or quarantine of affected individuals are warranted. For this reason, the time it takes to run specimens and the support for interpreting the results is crucial in times of public health crisis. Laboratorians are great at library preparation and generating sequence data. However, not many bioinformaticians or have the, techni the technical expertise to translate the data into meaningful results. Most sequencing platforms give you all the output files like the BAM, FASTQ, FAST5, and FASTA files, but doesn't go the extra mile in genomically characterizing these into readily accessible, meaningful results that is up to date. These limitations, including setup cost and cost per sample, greatly limit the ability of NGS in most public health labs. Due to the high cost per sample for some sequencing platforms, most public health labs have to do a cost analysis for different platforms to choose the platform that fits the budget instead of the platform that achieves high efficiency, precision, and accuracy. The needs. Staying compliant and validation support and guidance for manufacturers is a high need when it comes to public health lab. Also, asset development. Most labs need uh, panels to increase the number of use cases, one in a box, paired with bioinformatics for metagenomics analysis. As public health labs shift towards more pathogen agnostic approach in terms of sequencing, having readily designed panels to test for multiple pathogens is much needed. Most importantly, that it be paired with an analysis tool that builds in bioinformatics pipeline and provides results that are actionable and meaningful to public health officials. Future of NGS in public health. Potential support for clinical diagnosis. When broader spectrum of detection and insight into detecting pathogens of unknown origins, and the third will be providing more information and data. With the rise in vaccine outbreak cases and the correlation of some SARS-CoV-2 variants to vaccine efficacy, and to some extent antibody treatment, next generation sequencing could play a pivotal role in how treatment of future vaccines are developed and administered. Insight into detecting pathogens of unknown origins, with the capabilities now and the experience gained from sequencing, most public health labs are now looking to support not only investigations and surveillance work, but to be at the forefront of detecting pathogens of unknown origins in the communities. Also, to quote, the quote below from the lab director of the Oregon State Public Health Laboratory, Dr. John Fontana, sums up the significance of NGS data to public health, to public health and I quote, as NGS expands, and we learn more about possible significant mutations, their effect and clinical significance, public health 
will be able to provide substantial data to stakeholders to make effective decisions to protect our communities. And this is a direct quote from Dr. John Fontana from the Oregon State Public Health Laboratory. The unsung heroes. Finally, the unsung heroes, which are our public health workers and partners. The magnificent work with NGS data generation and submission, over 10 million worldwide submissions to GSAID, one of the greatest collaborative work the scientific community has ever seen so far, and to other third party platforms to help the study of this virus and the evolution of other viruses. The unparalleled devotion to public health community and health initi initiatives. Public health workers collecting samples on the field to those transporting those samples to testing centers and state labs, from those receiving and accessioning to those extracting the viral genome, even those working tirelessly to release report results in a timely manner, those preparing the samples for sequencing, and to the officials and epidemiologists taking the result and making decisions for the betterment of our community. This is a sacrificial effort that has made a difference in our communities. These heroes and heroines are, have promoted the vision and mission of public health and safety and deserve a sincere thanks for their contribution, sacrifice, and dedication to public health. Thank you.